The posterior cervical laminoplasty is a very useful and powerful tool in a select population of patients. This is a procedure done from the back, so the incision is usually in the midline up and down. This will give us exposure to the back of the spine, and you can see here the lamina demarcated by those red lines. Now, if you look at a slice of the spine like this, you can see how there's some pressure on the spinal cord and even some on the nerves mediated by this ligament thickening here and kind of a small canal. So in this procedure, you make a full trough here and remove the ligamentum flavum on one side, but you make a small score on the other side. You don't necessarily make a full thickness cut and then elevate the lamina and the spinous process to decompress the spinal cord. Now, when you have that gap, you can see that you have to fill it, and I usually use something that looks like this with a little spacer made out of bone. That spacer is applied to a plate, and that little plate is secured using these small screws. On the outside, it's secured to the lateral mass and on the medial edge to the lamina, and that helps open up the spinal canal and expand the circumference of the spinal canal. You can really do anything from three down to seven, fairly comfortably, although I tend to do three to six primarily. This is a powerful technique for multiple levels. Probably the single most salient characteristic is that this procedure preserves motion. So you can see leaning forward and leaning back. There's no structures kind of connecting up these levels, but you can see this preserves motion with flexion extension, turning the head, and, and also lateral bending.